Hey everyone, welcome to theCUBE's continuous coverage of AWS reInvent 2021. I'm Lisa Martin with John Furrier. We are running one of the industry's largest and most important hybrid tech events with AWS, and this massive ecosystem of partners right now. There are two live CUBE sets, two remote sets, over 100 guests on the program, and we're pleased to welcome back one of our alumni to talk about the next generation in cloud innovation. George Elisier is joins John and me, the Director of Product Management for EC2 Edge at AWS. George, welcome to the program. Glad to be here in person. Thank Isn't you for having me. Isn't it great to be here in person? It's awesome to be here in person, finally. So the, the, one of the things that is very clear is the AWS flywheel of innovation. And there was no slowdown with what's happened in the last 22 months. Amazing announcements, new leadership. We talked a little bit about 5G yesterday, but let's talk more about that. Everyone is excited about 5G. Consumers, businesses, what's going on? So yeah, I wanted to talk to you today about the a new service that we launched called AWS Private 5G. Essentially, it's a service that allows any AWS customer to build their own private 5G network. Uh, and what we've tried to do with the service is make it dead simple and cost effective for anyone without any telco experience or expertise, really, to build their own private 5G network. So you just have to go to your AWS console, um, describe the parameters of your network, simple stuff, like where do you want it to be located, the throughput, the number of devices, and AWS will build a plan for your network and ship you everything that you need. Just plug it together, uh, turn it on, and the network automatically configures itself. All you got to do is pop your SIM cards that we sent you into your mobile devices, and you have a private 5G network working um, in, in your, on your premises. One of the things that we know and love about AWS is its customer obsession. It's focused on the customers, that whole flywheel of all the innovation that comes out, as Adam was saying yesterday to the customers, we deliver this, but, but you wanted more. We said we deliver this, but you wanted more. Talk to me a little bit about some of the customer catalysts for private 5G. Yeah. Um, you, Actually, one of the good examples is where we are right now. More and more AWS customers need to connect an, an increased number of devices, right? And these devices become more data hungry. You know, they need to push data around. They also become more and more wireless, right? Um, uh, so when you are trying to connect devices in a manufacturing floor, be it sensors, uh, you know, connected trucks, forklifts, or in a convention center, you look at how many devices there are around us. When you're trying to, to connect these devices with a wired network, you quickly run into physical problems. Like it's, it's hard to lay cable anywhere. And customers try to use Wi-Fi for many of these use cases, but as the number of devices grows into the thousands and you, know, you need to put more and more data around, you quickly reach the limitations of what a Wi-Fi technology, and also Wi-Fi is not really great at covering really open, large spaces. So that's where these customers, you know, think of college campuses, convention centers, manufacturing floors, all of these customers, really what they need to be able to do is to leverage the power of the mobile networks. However, doing that by yourself is pretty hard. So that's what we aim to, to enable here. Uh, we, aim, we aim to enable these customers to build very easily and cost effectively their own. Uh, okay, George, so I have to ask, I'm totally curious. I love this announcement, because um, it brings together kind of the edge story, but also, I'm a bandwidth lover, I love more broad, give me more broadband. Faster, cheaper, more broadband. How does it work? So take me through the use case of, what do I need to deploy? Do I need to have a, um, a backhaul connection? What does that look like? Is there certain bandwidth requirements? How big is the footprint? What's the radius? Just walk me through, how do I roll this out? Yeah, sure. Some of that stuff actually depends on your requirements, right? How, how big the, how, how much of a space do you want to cover? Basically what we ship you, we're in preview right now. So we're, we're shipping you the, the simplest configuration, which is basically, these things called small cells. They're you know, radio units, and you know, antennas. Uh, and all you have to do is connect them to your local uh, network that has internet access. These things connect and automatically head, you know, connect home to the cloud and basically integrate and build up your whole network. All, all you need is that internet connection and, and they know what to do. Now, how big is the network? You can, you can make it pretty big. You can cover hundreds of thousands of square feet with, with uh, cellular networks, with mobile networks. Um, you know, the bigger you, the space you want to cover, the more of these uh, radio units we're going to ship you. Uh, so classic wireless radios. Yes. You light up the area with exactly. 5G, connect it to the network, that's your choke point. The bigger the pipe, the... Talks, the bigger the pipe that talks to... I mean, well, there are, there's, two, uh, there's two things to consider here. There is 
local connectivity. So devices talking to each other and there is connectivity back to somewhere else, like the internet or the cloud. There are use cases, for example, let's say, data uh, uh, video feeds that you want to push up to, uh, to do some inference in the cloud. In these use cases, you're basically pushing all of the data up. There is no left, there is no east-west connectivity locally, and that's where our simplest configuration works best. There are other um, uh, use cases where there is a lot of connectivity and devices talk to each other locally, like in this place, for example, right? In, this, in these cases, we can ship you that second configuration where we actually ship you a managed hardware, AWS managed hardware on premises, and that runs the smart of the network and allows all of your data traffic to remain local. And that's Wavelength or Outpost or both? That's a, a, a different configuration of AWS Private 5G. It's a, oh. it's a, it's a managed service. We take, we take care of it. You, basically it's very, um, it has a pricing model which is very customer friendly. Uh, because you, like most AWS services, you can start with no upfront fees. You can scale and pay as you scale. So it's, easy, so it's designed to deploy easily. Yep, deploy How big is the footprint? Just, I'm just curious, is it a pole? Is it like, uh, is it like an antenna? Is it like six so feet an tall? Is it an, small? Yeah, well the antenna is, you know, the small cell, they call them small cells in, you know, in, in cellular land, there. it's this big. And uh, you can, you know, you can hide this. There is actually a demo um, in the Venetian of, of the private 5G service, so you, you, can, you can actually see it in action. Um, but yeah, yeah uh, you, that thing can cover 10,000 10, square feet, just one of them, and so you can, you can so think can of how this So I could bring this to Palo Alto and put a 5G network downtown and be like the king. You could, yes, you <laughs> could have your own private 5G <laughs> network. You can monetize that, John. <laughs> Next on the queue. <laughs> Great stuff. So, in terms of, of industries adopting this, you gave us some examples, obviously convention centers, you know, campuses, universities. I'm just curious, given the amount of acceleration that we've seen in every industry the last 22 months where organizations must become digital, they, they depend on that for their livelihood. We saw this, all these pivots, right, 22 months ago, to how do we survive this? How do we thrive? Our consumers now are, whether it's an end user consumer or it's an enterprise, have this expectation that we're going to be able to communicate no matter where we are, 24 by seven. Whether it's healthcare, financial services. I'm just curious if you're seeing any industries in particular that you think are really prime for this private 5G. Yeah, so manufacturing is a, is a really great example uh, because you have to cover large spaces. You have thousands of devices, sensors, etc. And using other solutions like Wi-Fi is, does not provide you the, the depth of capabilities, like for example, um, you know, advanced security capabilities or even capabilities to prioritize traffic from some devices over others, which is what a 5G network can do for you. But also, you know, it involves large spaces, both indoors and outdoors. We, you know, actually Amazon is a really great example of, um, you know, of using this. Uh, we're working with Amazon fulfillment centers. These are, you know, the warehouses that yes. fulfill your orders when yes. you order online. Um, and they are a mix of indoor space and outdoor space, and you can think of, you know, I don't know if you've seen pictures or videos, there is robots running around, there is sensors everywhere, there is uh, packing lines, etc. all of these things, in order to operate performantly, but also securely and safely for the people that are around, um, need to be well connected at a very uh, high reli reliability rate, right? So, uh, Amazon Fulfillment Networks is actually using private, uh, AWS Private 5G to connect all of these devices, the really key thing here is you don't have to go drop a thousand of these access points we're talking about. You can, you, can, you can probably cover your space with five, ten of these. So your operational expenses, your maintenance goes down and there is less interruption of your normal operations. Like you, can't, you don't have to stop your manufacturing line for someone to come in and fix your Wi-Fi access point. It's great for campuses like college campuses. College campus is a great one. We, you know, we've worked with college campuses um, including the CMU University in the past to, you know, with some of our partners. To, um, uh, to, de to deploy well, some of the more telcos, you used to have these distribution, DAS systems, distribution, whatever they call it, accelerate, whatever, amplifying to get, get extra coverage. Um, this seems to be a good fit um, for that. How, you mentioned this in preview. How do people get involved? Is there like a criteria? How do, how do, how do when's it going to be available? You'll get priority, John, we'll get you on. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you can tell I'm ready to jump in. Yeah. But take us through the program. Where, yeah. What's the work plans? So currently we're, uh, you know, we're, we're in that preview mode, so we're shipping you this small configuration, the simpler configuration. Uh, you can sign up on the AWS website, and you know, we, we, as we scale our operations and our supply chain, because this involves also you know, hardware, et cetera, we're going to go to general availability GA over the next few months, and we'll have both configurations open. So I, I encourage everyone who is interested, 
go to the AWS website and sign up. We're, we're rushing to get that in customers' hands because we're getting overwhelmingly positive feedback on what we built. This is transformative. I mean, cl clearly what you're talking about here is going to transform industries. We think so. And, and help organizations transform themselves and outpace the competitors that are in the rear view mirror who aren't going to be able to take advantage of this. We're on the show floor, we've got lots of people here. Where can people actually go and, and see this preview, test it out? Uh, there is a, an, uh, an actual uh, demo um, in the Venetian, uh, I can't remember, sorry, I can't remember the, the, the room. I think it's uh, on the, yes, uh, actually it's on the, four, on the third floor uh, where the meeting rooms are on uh, outside 3501, if anyone wants to go. All right, we're going to stop by in lunchtime. Yes. <laughs> Yeah, it's a, you can see it in action and um, you know you could you could see a future where everything, you know, you look around, there is thousands of devices here. You could power all of these devices with a single cell and you know really scale that What's out. What's the throughput in the 5G? Just curious. Um, on obviously range is better than Wi-Fi. Range is better. Uh, for outdoors obviously or yep. big factories. What's the throughput on the, on the, on the spectrum? De depending on the spectrum that you choose, and that's actually a, a really good segue, um, the device, the, the, the service that we've built, it's spectrum agnostic, so it can be used on, right now we're using it on what we call CBRS spectrum, which is the free for all, you can, you know, you can, you can use it yourself, but also customers can bring their own spectrum, and we're working with a bunch of um, uh, CSPs, uh, operators, to, to, to build advanced bundles where you can work this on license spectrum. So if you're going up the spectrum in what they call millimeter wave. So you have to be a spectrum owner to bring your own license. You could. So telco, right, yeah. for example. You could be a telco, bring your, you know, and work with us as a partner. Or some actually, uh, actually manufacturing customers have purchased rights to small uh, spectrum bands so they can use that, those in combination with this service to deploy. So, to, to your original question, as you're going back up the spectrum, you can drive more and more throughput. You, it's, it's not unheard of to drive one gig you know, to, a, to a single so, device. So the low-hanging fruit is the, the use cases that have critical need for edge connectivity. Manufacturing, um, certain maybe exactly. retail or whatever, that they'll do the deployment. Yeah. We can, uh, we, can, we can see this uh, being ap applicable, because, we, because you can start super small, you can see this being applicable even to branch offices, right? Like, uh, let's say I was talking to a customer yesterday, they were thinking, oh, I have all these branch offices, I don't even, I, I don't even want to have IT there. I just want something that very quickly and easily, you know, I can manage centrally and it just connects. Can I shoot fast. a fixed wireless shot to the wavelength? Or do I have to have backhaul with wired cable? Oh, they say, yeah, actually we are planning to, you know, I, I, I talked about where the smarts of the network live. In the, they can live in a region, they can live in a local zone, they can live in a wavelength zone. So we're, we're combining more and more of these products as well. Super exciting. And edge computing obviously is, a, is an obvious thing that, you know, we, we should be working on. Incredible work, George, that you and the team have done transforming industries. And I, I don't know, I'm feeling there's might be a like, cube two. Is it would it be 2.0, John? Ready to go. I'm ready to go. He's ready to go. George, thank you so much for joining John and me today. It's great, great to, to be you. here. Thanks for having me. Uh, for John Furrier, I'm Lisa Martin. You're watching theCUBE, the global leader in live tech coverage.